Well, as uh, I'm sure you can tell already, Dale is not here. Amen. <laughs> and uh, he is, he is, uh, he's got some family in, a uh, little bit of a conflict, and uh, it's a long story, brother, it's a long story. <laughs> he's fine, everything's fine. Um, we've been asking our pastor for a little while to take a sabbatical, uh, as is in our bylaws. Uh, Dale, if you're watching, as is in our bylaws, uh, we've been trying to get him to take a little bit of a break for a little while, and this is going to be that part of that. Uh, you would be amazed at how difficult it is to be on staff with a church. Uh, I'm sure that there are people that look at that and go, wow, what an easy job. I wish I could do that. I will, I will promise you, no, you do not. Um, there's, a, there's an old joke, a man comes home from church, and he's angry, and he says, I'm done with this, I'm never going back there again, the people don't like me, the deacons hate me, the music minister threw something at me today, I'm not going back. And his wife said, but honey, you're the pastor. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. <laughs> today, so, you, you, have to, you have to endure me, my apologies early on. Uh, I, I will be honest with you. I don't know how long this message is going to last, but I know it's not long. It does not take long to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I know a lot of people think, oh, I don't have time. I don't have time to share with this cashier because there's people in line behind me. Well, what if the person in line behind you needs to hear it as well? You know, it doesn't take long. And I've given you this many times, a simple little phrase to use when you're witnessing. I was, fill in the blank, but then, fill in the blank, and now, fill in the blank. And it's not hard. I was lost and dying and separated from God on my way to hell. But then, Jesus came in, cleansed my heart of my sin, gave me hope and peace unlike anything that I ever had, and now I'm serving him today, and my place in heaven is secure. Amen. That's all you need. You, you notice that I didn't say, well, uh, excuse me, if you'll just turn to John chapter 3. You don't have to do that. You know, brothers and sisters, I would love for everyone in this room to know the three verses that I know. Well, that's probably all that I know. You ever heard that before? <laughs> a pastor gets up and says, I wish everyone knew the Bible like I know the Bible. I lost this because I forgot what color it was in my office. That's how well I know the Bible. I may not know all the words, I may not know all the addresses, but I sure know the author, Amen. and I'm going to share him. It may not be exact, it may not be in King James, but it's going to be from here, and it's going to be what I know, and it's going to be what God has made sure in my life and secured in my heart to share with everyone that I come in contact with. And I hope that God will always give me the strength and the ability to do just that. I had an opportunity, well, not really an opportunity. I, I was hoping for the opportunity to go see the Billy Graham Library and Museum. Uh, those of you who know me know that I have read everything that Dr. Graham wrote. I've read everything that's written about him. I know an immense amount about the man and what his ministry was. I've heard every one of his sermons. I have a great deal of respect for him for what he did and what he didn't do. What he didn't do was compromise. And I have a great deal of respect for that. And I wanted to see that. And so I knew right down the street, I mean, literally three, two blocks from my hotel, was the Billy Graham Library and Museum. I couldn't wait to get over there to see it. I walked over there to see it, and it was closed. 
So like a child at the zoo looking at the monkey cage, I pressed my face into the gate trying to see something. And what I could see, okay, I'll be honest, what I could see with the binoculars that I had carried with me, <laughs> I'm being honest here, I could see the grave sites where he and Ruth and his parents are buried. And so I went to find out what's on Billy Graham's tombstone. And it says, Billy Graham, November 7th, 1918 to February 21st, 2018, preacher of the gospel. And there's a verse, John 14, 6, I am the way the truth, and the life, and no man comes to me, comes to the Father except through me. And Billy made that his life first, and he made that his purpose in life. I posted something on Facebook. Some of you may have seen it, but it says the church, it's time for the church to get out of trying to fix social justice. It's time for the church to get out of trying to fix financial problems for the country. It's time for the church to get out of things that this world is worried about and start serving some souls because it's getting late. Amen. I do not know how much longer we have on this earth. I have no idea. It could be tomorrow. We may not see that all things have been completed, but God may say, you missed it. It's done. I'm coming now. It could be a hundred years from now. Either way, it's soon. In God's timetable, it's soon. And as I was studying this lesson, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I knew what God wanted me to teach on. I wasn't sure how. I'm still not. I wasn't sure why. I'm still not. But God has a purpose for all things. Our lesson's going to be on obedience today, so it's going to be a little bit into John chapter 14, but we're not going to miss some meat in the early parts of John chapter 14. That I promise you. We live in a world today, in a culture that says all roads lead to heaven. Jesus is the only way is being omitted as much as people can possibly omit it. They're trying to omit Jesus Christ. People do not want you to say or hear that Jesus Christ is the answer for the world's problems today. They do not want to admit that the only way that this world is going to have social justice is through coming to Christ and living a life that is pleasing to Him and in a way that serves others. People do not want you to hear that. They want you to hear, oh no, we need, fill in the blank, man's idea. When the, thing, the problem has already been solved by God. Live a life that is pleasing and obedient to God. That is how we fix the problems of the world. So, with that knowledge, what is our chances of fixing the problems of the world? The answer is zero, in case you're wondering. We're not going to fix the problems of the world. What we need to do is fix the hearts of the world and let God worry about the problems. That's where we have to be. That's where we have to go. Let's go to chapter 14 of John. John chapter 14. We have in this chapter some comfort, some direction, some guidance. If you want two chapters of the Bible that I would recommend reading every single day, John chapter 14 and 15. Read those two chapters. They're not long. But what you will get out of them, if you will apply the message that is there, is a peace and understanding unlike anything you've ever had in your life. 
We're going to start in verse 1. Our text is in verse 23, but we're going to get there. And I promise you, we'll get out of here in time to get to lunch. I promise that, all right? Verse 1, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many I-like mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. I'm going to stop right there for just a moment. I am the, uh, let not your heart be troubled. Excuse me, I got ahead of myself. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. When we have a problem, when something comes in our life, no matter what it is, okay, there is nothing insignificant to God. Sometimes people come to me with a problem, and I'm, my first thought, because I'm human and an idiot, and my first thought is, wow, that's small. It may be small to me, but it's not small to them. It's big to them. It's a problem, and I need to help them to get through whatever this is. Maybe it seems small because I'm a little bit more mature in my walk than they are, and I've already gone through it. The maturity, maturity process has already taken place with me in that area. And now God is bringing people to me that are going through those problems so that I can help them go through it. If you want to know how to go through unemployment for a year, come talk to me. I promise you, I know. 2017, I was laid off on January 5th. It was a lovely day, about 8.30 in the morning. I thought... Eh, no problem. I got 20 years in this, in my field. There's a lot of jobs out there. And I'm going to be working in three months. I'm gonna take, in fact, I'm going to take a month off. I'm going to do nothing for a month. and I'm not going to look for a job, nothing. I'm just going to take some time off. And at no time did I ever say, Lord, what do you want me to learn in this time? What is your will for me at this time? What is it that I need to get out of this trouble that I'm in right now? I didn't do that. By the way, 30 pounds ago, I couldn't have stood up. <laughs> I didn't do that. My immediate mind went to my own knowledge, my own self, my own value, and I said, got this. Don't need you. Take a break. That's what I did. I didn't go to God and say, Father, what do I need to learn? You're trying to show me something. You're trying to wake me up. You've got a purpose in this. I want to know what that purpose is. We either go to ourselves or we go to fear in the time of trouble. I, uh, it says, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Trust me, God. That's what this is telling us. We don't, it's not time for trouble. The world's got plenty of trouble. You're going to have job issues. You're going to have people problems. You're going to have things that come into your life. I'm sorry. Once you become a Christian, I'm looking right into the camera at whoever needs to hear this. Once you become a Christian, it does not take all of your troubles away. Amen. In fact, Satan will attack you at a higher level. And if Satan is not attacking you, it's probably because you're walking with him and not against him in the light and the wisdom and the direction of Jesus Christ. And I make no apologies for saying that. If you're not running into the devil every once in a while, you better be careful because you're probably walking beside him. The light at the end of the tunnel is probably an oncoming train if you're not walking with Jesus daily. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there's many mansions. I'll continue to say that. If it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, you, there you may be also. A promise. Jesus is coming back. 
It's been a long time. You know, the prophets didn't speak for 400 years before Jesus came back on the scene. And the people were like going, eh. you know, if he was coming, he'd have already come. I mean, obviously it's not going to happen because, well, I hadn't seen anything. I mean, come on. How long is this guy going to wait? Is he just going to leave us in this mess? Right. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Jesus is going to leave us in this mess. Why? So that we can help each other out. So that we can learn to love each other. So that we can learn to serve each other. Do you think when we get to heaven, we're just going to be floating around and it's going to be all perfect and we're not going to have anything to do and it's just going to... Do you really think that? I hope you don't. There's still going to be stuff to do. One thing is going to be praising God. But God's going to have things for us to do. In fact, we're coming back here to rule as kings and queens. If you ever get a chance to hear that man teach that lesson, you've got to hear it. You've missed it. It's going to be awesome. But there's only one way to get there. We're getting to that. He says, I've got, I'm going to go to prepare a place for you. I want you with me. But there's only one way that you can get here with me. And that is through accepting me as your Savior through obedience. That's it. Through faith in Jesus Christ. Obeying His will for your life. Doing what He wants you to do even when it's hard. Even when it's tough. Even when you don't want to. Even when people are pushing back against you. Even when people throw rocks even when you've got the full armor of God on and the protection is in the front and you are able to withstand all of the evil darts of Satan and the problem is the darts are coming from behind you. Even when those things are happening, you serve God. You're obedient to His will for your life. In verse... Four, and you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How do we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it's enough for us. Jesus said, Have I been so long with you, and yet you have not come to know me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. How do you say, show us the Father? And there are people standing in pulpits today saying that Jesus Christ is not God. Yet they read that verse and insist that Jesus is not God. Jesus is God incarnate. God took on the, the, the uh, presence of flesh, the appearance of flesh, and came to this earth with a purpose of dying on the cross for us, paying the sin penalty, the sin debt for us. Jesus is God. And I make no apologies for saying that because it's scriptural. It bugs me when someone says, oh, no, 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 Jesus isn't God. God is spirit. Jesus was flesh. Right? God entered into flesh and walked on this earth for some 30 years. The Bible says so we will not beat that up any longer. But if you have any questions about that, please feel free to ask me later. He says, you know where I've got to go. You know the way to get back to me is through me. 
The only way we can come to Jesus is through, come to God is through Jesus Christ and accepting the free gift of salvation that he provided for us once and for all. By the way, we're not to the text yet. We're getting there. Verse 10, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own initiative, but the Father abiding in me does his works. This is where our words, when witnessing, should come from. From the power of the Holy Spirit. When we witness to someone, it is by the power of the Holy Spirit. When Dale or myself or Danny or whomever stands in this pulpit to proclaim the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, it must be by the power of the Holy Spirit. The words must come from God, not from us. I was asked a couple of days ago, well, you know, aren't you going to say, here's my notes, by the way, that's it, that's all. Well, aren't you going to study a little bit more for the message? I said, yes. I'm praying every single day that God will speak through me and that his voice will be heard, not mine, that I will not be in the way, that I will not be a stumbling block to anyone who hears God's word on this Sunday. Because if you are hearing my words, you're getting nothing out of this. We might as well shut it down and go home. You need to be hearing from God not some man. It's exactly how I answer, and I'm going to make some people mad. Sorry. Which version of the Bible should I use? The Greek. But since we don't speak Greek, you should use the version of the Bible that God speaks to you through. I will encourage you, pick up an NIRV, New International Reader's Version. It's one we have back here for the kids. It's written at a third grade level. When I read it through the first time, I don't think I have ever seen the Bible more clearly than I saw it then. And it was written for a third grader. Maybe that just speaks about me. <laughs> I worked with children for a long time. Maybe that's just what I need. Does God speak to you through the NIV? Use the NIV. Does he speak to you through the King James? Use the King James. New King James, ESV, CSB, MIC, KEY. I don't care. Yes. Use the version of the Bible that God speaks to you through. Okay, I'm off that soapbox. Verse 11, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Otherwise, believe on account of the works themselves, what you've seen. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, these works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father. Jesus is saying, I have taught you. I want you to teach others. I want you to disciple each other. I want you to learn from each other. I want you to go out there into the world and share what I've done with everyone that you meet so that they can learn, you can disciple them, and this message will grow throughout the world. He took 12 guys, well, 11. There's a whole other... I, I, one of these days, I'll do a message on 12. By the way, it's not Matthias in the book of Acts, but I, we'll get there someday. He took these guys and he sent them out into different parts of the world and shared this. No, no, they didn't have this yet. Shared what they had seen, what they had heard from Jesus. This message was passed down from person to person who had an experience with God. And I will say this to you today. If you have not had an experience, an encounter with God, 
Why not? It's because you are not taking the time to get into His Word and ask Him to come to you and to share who He is with you. It's that personal. It's that much of an individual thing. Salvation. The way I came to Christ, it's all through faith. But when Jesus came to me, He showed me what I needed to know. When He comes to you, He will show you what you need to know. He will also share a calling with you. He will share gifts with you if you'll listen. That's our problem. We don't listen. I was sitting in North Carolina. I was in this hotel in the woods, which I loved. I loved it. So I walked off into the woods, and I sat down on this tree. It had fallen. I'm sure it made a noise. Y'all know the joke. Come on. If a man is alone in the woods, is he still wrong? Amen. Yes, okay. I, so I'm sitting there, and it's quiet. Have you ever heard quiet? It's deafening. And my mind went to Moses at the Red Sea. Go out to the beach and listen to how loud the ocean is. Now you're Moses. Red Sea in front of you. Egyptian army coming behind you. Complainers around you. Church members. Around you. And God said to Moses, Stretch out your rod over the sea. No. Moses, hear my voice. Stretch out your rod and see. Can you hear God? Can you hear his voice? Look, I can tell you that God doesn't speak like he does in Cecil B. DeMille's Ten Commandments. It's a still, small voice. And it's why we need to take the time to find a peaceful place and listen for God's voice. But what we do is we go out there, God, okay, I'm in, a I'm in a quiet place right now. It's quiet all around me. Got nothing going on around me. There's no distraction whatsoever. I'm reading your word, but I still can't hear you. Shut up! <laughs> Listen! I, think, I, I wish God would just say, will you shut up? I got something to say, but you aren't listening. Why aren't we blessed? Because we won't shut up. Why aren't our needs met? We won't shut up. Well, I don't know what my calling is. Well, shut up. God, I've been praying and praying and praying, and you haven't listened once. I've been answering and answering and answering. We gotta, you know, we gotta be quiet and hear. This is about spiritual maturity. It's about being a mature Christian in our walk and obedient to Him. I'm going to jump forward here to verse 23. John 14, verse 23. Okay, I, I, don't want, I want to make sure I get the context. I do not want to miss the context. Verse 21, I'll read verse 21 to you. Uh, he who has my commandments and keeps them... He, it is he who loves me, and he who loves me shall be loved by my Father, 
and I will love him and will disclose myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, what then has happened that you're going to disclose yourself to us and not the world? Jesus answered in verse 23, If anyone loves me, he will keep my words. And my father who, loved, who, love, who loves him, or excuse me, my father will love him and will dwell, will come to him and make our abode with him. What is God's will? His will be done. God is looking for obedient Christians. Obedience. Not, if you don't, then I will smite thee. No. He's seeking our hearts in obedience. What is obedience? <laughs> I was going through some other sermons, and I thought this was funny. It's a small church. I really don't know where it's from. But the pastor said, do you know what the definition of obedience is a country church? Obedience is, it's obeying God. Yeah, true. Obedience is doing God's will for your life. Let me repeat that. Obedience is doing God's will for your life. God has called me to do what I do. God has called me to be right here at Autumn Creek Baptist Church to serve the children, to serve the youth, to serve the adults, to serve our pastor, to be here as a servant. That is God's will for my life. You need to find out what God's will is for your life and be obedient to it. It starts with the obedience of prayer and reading His Word. Our problem is we don't pray. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, we pray. When the meal comes, thank you, Father, for these gifts that we are about to receive. Bless us food to our bodies and those who prepared it for us. Amen. It's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is when you come to the end of your rope in any situation, your first response is to pray. And let me tell you something. Before you got on the rope, you should have prayed. When a situation comes into your life, pray. Don't wait. Don't let it get bad. Don't see how much I can take. Pray. Sometimes prayer is this. I don't know what to say. Sometimes prayer is not speaking. Sometimes prayer is just listening for God's direction and guidance and wisdom for your life. You don't have to talk. God knows He intercedes. The Spirit utters words and things that we can't even understand back to God because He knows our hearts. He knows the pain we're in. He wants to talk to you, but you have to listen through obedience to Him. When you were little, and your dad was talking and telling you what you were going to do. You're going to clean your room. You're going to vacuum these floors before you do anything else today. Okay, now while your dad was doing that, were you going, okay, I got to clean my room. Got, got it, Dad. Now, what, uh, I know that it was, uh, while well, I'm going to be cleaning my room, I'm going to be, uh, but uh, what, okay, what, about, what if I were to uh, not vacuum right away, but I were to go out, outside and hold on, Dad, I know you're talking, but hold on, let me finish. Let me, let me talk to you. All right, or, you going to do that? <laughs> no, Dad wouldn't, wouldn't hit me like that. It's back here. 
You're not going to interrupt your father. So why do we interrupt our father? Through obedience, through love, through respect, through fear. Not that we are afraid of God, but through a respect and a fear of Him and honoring Him and who He is. We need to shut our mouths, open our hearts so that we can hear what He has for us. The problem with the world today is it doesn't want to hear what God has to say because they want God to hear them as they rip him apart. Lee Strobel, I'm sure some of you know that name. He wrote a book called The Case for Christ. That book started out as an opportunity to prove that God did not exist. And as he did research on finding out ways to disprove God, all he could find is ways to prove God's existence. And he came to Christ while he was trying to walk away. And Jesus said, no, Lee, you're not getting away. As far as I know, Lee might be teaching over at Second Baptist right now. I I don't know if he still has that class or not, but is he still at Second? He's in the Woodlands now. Okay, so he's there you go. Listen here. Absolutely. So verse 24, he who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while abiding with you. Jesus said to his disciples, I've been right here, I've been telling you these things, now you're not going to understand them? How many of us have, okay, raise your hand if you've been a Christian for more than 35 seconds. Okay, good. (laughs) You knew what was, you thought I was a 20 years, 15 years, 10 years. No, I don't have time for that. If you've been a Christian for any time at all, you know what you're supposed to do. God has made it clear to you. You go to his word. You go to him. You go to your brothers and sisters in Christ. You learn from each other. You love on each other. You care about each other. We come together as a family. I wish everyone in this room had been here last Saturday watching what I got to watch. I got to watch this building get cleaned within an inch of its life. Floors vacuumed, floors shampooed, places swept, chairs put away, lights fixed. All these things were going along. Why? Because we had to? No. Because we love our family and we want what's best for them. That's why we come together on Sunday. Because I want to see y'all. I miss you Tuesday through Saturday. I get to see these guys on Monday. It's, eh. I want to see more. I want to see you on Wednesday. You, you want, I've been told, well, you know, we don't know all the songs. All right, fine. Come up here on Wednesday and sing with us. Come practice the songs with us. Prepare to laugh because we are a mess up here on Wednesdays. Am I right, Mike? We're a mess up here. We're learning them too. You want to learn the songs? Come up Sunday night, Wednesday night. We'd love to have you. Love to. I just want to see my brothers and sisters in Christ. I've got to stop that in my Sunday school class. I've got to stop that, my brothers and sisters. Because I love the lost world. Because I want them to come to Christ too. You know, is I love my brothers and sisters. What, do you hate the world? Is that what the deal is? I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. You hate the world? You're not supposed to. Through obedience, we come to Christ. Through obedience, we walk with Christ. Through obedience, we love one another. 
You want a wonderful example of social justice? Come right here, right now, and look at this congregation. We love each other. And as the old Sunday school song says, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in His sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world, and I love you all. I don't care what this looks like. I want to see your face. I want to see you here. I want to worship with you. I want to sit down in Bible study with you. I want to sing with you. You know, not one time did Jesus say, well, this matters. You know why this mattered to Jesus? Because it was a corruptible form, a form that would die, and one that he could lay down that life for us in. That's why he chose flesh, because it's corruptible and it goes back to the dust from which it came. I don't care about the rest of it. I want to know if you love Jesus. I want to know if you are walking with Jesus. I want to know if you need help in your walk with Christ. I do. I have some brothers in this room right now. Ladies, no disrespect. It's just a thing I've got the men because I may have to be alone with them. It's just me. I've got brothers in this room right now that if I picked up the phone at 2 o'clock in the morning, they'd meet me somewhere and pray with me and help me and counsel with me and cry with me if that's what I needed. And we need that. We need that level of obedience, that level of care, that level of love because Jesus said so in his word. Verse 27. No, sorry, verse 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Now, that does not mean that you're going to have all the scripture memorized because you have the power of the Holy Spirit in you. It does not mean that. What it does mean is that you are going to be able to share your individual testimony in a way that will change hearts and help people come to Christ because of what you've gone through. If we went through this room, there's about 80 people in this room right now, 70 people in this room right now. If we went through person by person, we would not all have the same stories. We would not have all the same experiences. And God will bring people into our lives who have similar experiences, going through similar trouble that we've been through because we've been through that maturation process with Christ in that problem where we can help each other. Teach everyone what I have taught you. Are you getting it? It's an individual thing. What I've gone through isn't what Jim's gone through. We've got two different things to share. comes to one point, Jesus Christ. Verse 28. You heard that I said to you, I go away and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I go to the Father and the Father is greater than I. Let's go ahead and finish the chapter. And now I have told you before it comes to pass that when it comes to pass, you may believe. I will not speak much more with you for the ruler of the world is coming and he has nothing in me but that the world may know that I love the Father and as the Father gave my commandment, even so I do arise. Let us go from here. You have the Word in you. You have the Word in you. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God. And the Word was with God. And the same was in the beginning with God. You have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. That's what this is talking about. You have the power of the Holy Spirit in you. Not a spirit of fear, but a spirit of God. And when we go out into the world, we should go boldly 
with the message of Jesus Christ, ready to share at a moment's notice. Not going, okay, um, hold on. I, uh, let me, let me, t- um, uh, I am, no, that's not, no, hold on, hold on. That's not, that's not. Um, uh, uh, now, now, Jesus, at, no, hold on, uh, hold on. Uh, now, sir, no. Jesus loves you. He loved me, and I want to tell you that he loves you. I don't know a lot of Bible, but what I do know is that the power and the love and the joy and the compassion that Jesus showed me when he saved me and gave me the confidence of my salvation, I know that he'll give you. Did I thump the Bible at any time there? No. Did I just share you some things, share with you some things that are in the Bible? Do you get it? Be obedient with your testimony. Be obedient in your prayers. Be obedient in your listening. God has shared all the things that we need to do in this life if we will just be obedient and do them. What has God called you to do? Maybe it's make a movie, a Christian movie that brings people closer to Christ. We have a gentleman in this room right now that's being part of that. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's getting an opportunity to go around this city to different places. And when you see someone that's struggling, you have an opportunity to say, do you have Jesus in your life? Jesus will help you with that struggle. Maybe it's to sit in your house and pray for everyone in this room. Is that a calling? Of course it is. Maybe it's to be up here singing, playing an instrument, be on the computer, sweep a floor, clean a bathroom, rock a baby. What's your calling? What is your gifts? Teach a Sunday school class. Well, I tried to teach a Sunday school class, but there was just, you know, just me and two other people, so I gave up. Really? Where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in your presence. Why did you give up? Well, I used to teach fifth grade, but it was just me and one other fifth grader. Then teach that fifth grader. Well, I used to teach Iwanas, but oh, my class disbanded because there was nobody. Did you invite anyone? Oh, our church just isn't growing. I don't know what we're going to do because, you know, it's just the same as 70 people there every Sunday. Okay, are you inviting anyone to church? Are you offering your vehicle as an opportunity for as a ride for someone to come to church? Well, I don't don't come to the music because I don't like this. Really? It has to be what you like? To worship? Really? Isn't this all about our service to God? Yes, it is. Through obedience. We don't serve like we like to think we do. We don't pray like we like to think we do. We don't read God's word like we like to think we do. I will do this because I've got a couple of minutes here. If you picked up your Bible or your Bible app, I'll give you credit, once last week, raise your hand. Now keep your hands up. Twice. Three times. Four. Five. You see the hands starting to go down. And I'm not trying to embarrass anyone. 
I can't, I'm not going to go any further because I know Steve will have his hand up for the rest of the day because I know what his Bible app looks like. <laughs> I'm not trying to embarrass you, folks. I'm just simply trying to tell you that we need God's Word daily. Amen. People say, well, I went to church, so I got some God's Word. Well, great. So did you only eat Sunday this week? Or did you eat every day? Job said, I need this more than I need my daily bread. And through obedience to Christ, I will hear God's word. I will seek God's word. I will pray. Are you ready to make that your commitment? I'm going to pick up God's word every day and get something from God. I'm going to pray every day. I'm going to set aside some time, even if it's at night, to listen to God's voice. I am going to commit myself to serving others. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, I will do this. Are you ready to make that commitment? Too many Christians sitting on the fence, waiting for Jesus to come back, going, I'm good, I got mine, I don't need to do anything else. That is garbage. You will in no way live the victorious Christian life if you are not serving God and serving others. If you have not found where your service is, find it. Find it. Don't sit on the fence. Don't sit on the bench waiting to get into the game. Somebody will tell me. Somebody will call me. Somebody, I bet it will happen, happen. No, you get out there and you tell, tell Coach Dale, I want in the game. Where there is the smell of smoke of battle, of spiritual battle, I want to be in the war. And if the people will allow me, I will go to war with you. I will fight side by side with you because I know how evil, I know how devastating, I know how difficult it can be to fight Satan. And I will fight side by side with you. I will pray with you. I will cry with you. I will love on you. You tell me when you need help. There are hurting people in this room right now. Guys, we're going to go, close right now. But wait, I got one more thing. Would you play that video for me? I want you to see this. And after this video, we're going to close. I want you to see this. Without the preaching of the cross, without preaching the cross to ourselves all day and every day, we will very, very quickly revert to faith plus works as the ground of our salvation. So that to go to the old uh, Fort Lauderdale question, if you were to die tonight and, and, and you were getting entry into heaven, what would you say? If you answer that, and if I answer it in the first person, we've immediately gone wrong. Because I, because I believed, because I have faith, because I am this, because I am continuing. Loved ones, the only proper answer is in the third person, because he, because he. Now think about the thief on the cross. And what an immense, I can't, I, I can't wait to find that fellow one day to ask him, how did that shake out for you? Because you were, you, were, you, were, you were cussing the guy out with your friend. You'd never been in a Bible study. You never got baptized. You, never, you didn't know a thing about church membership. And, and, yet, and yet, you made it. You made it. How did you make it? That's what the angel must have said, you know, like, what are you doing here? Well, I don't know. What, what do you mean you don't know? Well, because I, I don't know. Well, you know, we, uh, uh, did you, 
<laughs> Excuse me, let me get my supervisor. They go get the supervisor, Ranger. So we have just a few questions for you. First of all, are you are you are you are you clear on the doctrine of justification by faith? <laughs> I said, I've never heard of it in my life. And, and what about, uh, let, let's just go to the doctrine of Scripture immediately. This guy's just staring. And eventually, in frustration, he says, on, on what basis are you here? And he said, the man on the middle cross said, I can come. <laughs> now, now, that's the, that is the only answer. That is the only answer. And if I don't preach the gospel to myself all day and every day, then I will find myself beginning to trust myself, trust my experience, which is part of my fallenness as a man. If I take my eyes off the cross, I can then give only lip service to its efficacy, while at the same time living as if my salvation depends upon me. And as soon as you go there, it will lead you either to abject despair or a horrible kind of arrogance. And it is only the cross. Through obedience, the thief on the cross came to Christ. He humbled himself and obeyed. And through faith, came to Christ. Brothers and sisters, through obedience, we serve God. Through obedience, we come to Him. One of the first steps of obedience for the Christian is baptism. I've heard people say, well, I accepted Christ as my Savior, so I don't need to be baptized. Not for salvation, but as a first step of obedience to him. Jesus was obedient to his Father through baptism. This life, this Christian life, is about obedience. And I think that we all need to take some time. The altar is open. We all need to take some time and humble ourselves and find that obedience that we truly need in this walk. As we sing, you do what God asks you to do. The opportunity to pray is here, and I will encourage you to come forward. I'll pray with you. Or I will let you pray for yourself. I will let anyone who wants to come up and pray for someone, please. If there's someone in your life that doesn't know Christ, altar's open. Turn them over to God. If you're struggling in your Christian walk, humble yourself. Pray and ask God to show you where your need is. As we sing, the altar is open.